Hi, my name is Brandon Ayers. I'm from the Cornea Service at Wills Eye Hospital, and I'm here in the Wills Eye Hospital Alumni Association newsroom to talk about one of the biggest breakthroughs in keratoconus technology or keratoconus treatment called collagen crosslinking. Now, what's so big about this new procedure called collagen crosslinking? Well, for years, we've had no real treatments for a progressive disease seen in younger patients called keratoconus. Keratoconus is a condition where the cornea or the front clear portion of the eye becomes cone-shaped, and this leads to progressive astigmatism and reduced vision. And in many of these patients, and some figures are as high as 20%, will go on to need corneal transplants. And as of a couple years ago, we really had no real therapeutic options for this disease. We would simply follow patients, and if they needed surgery, we would do the surgery. But now, for the past about 18 months or so, we've had a procedure called collagen crosslinking. And what this is, it's a procedure where we expose the cornea to riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, and then a calibrated UV light source. And this stiffens the cornea, which stops the progression of the keratoconus. So you got to understand me, this is to stop the progression of a disease, not a cure for the disease. Patients who we typically see with keratoconus are younger patients in their teens, 20s, maybe early 30s, who are noticing progressive changes in their vision. A lot of these patients will go to see a refractive surgeon to see if LASIK can help their vision, but LASIK would in fact worsen this condition, and so they're turned away with no real options. Now with collagen crosslinking, we can stop this process from, from moving forward and causing worsening of vision. The procedure itself is relatively simple. What we do is we initially make a scratch on the cornea, which we call an epithelial defect. After the epithelial defect is made, riboflavin drops are placed on the cornea at an interval of about every two minutes for a total of 30 minutes. And what this is doing is allowing the riboflavin to soak into the cornea to allow the reaction to take place. We'll then check the thickness of the cornea to make sure it's thick enough and make sure enough riboflavin has gotten into the cornea to turn on the UV light. We then focus a UV light over the eye and you stare at the light for 30 minutes. Now these protocols may change over time, but right now this is the standard uh, protocol for collagen crosslinking. Now the procedure itself is relatively simple, but afterwards there is some discomfort. There's going to be a scratch on the eye for about three days and that can be uncomfortable. Using cold artificial tears, keeping the lights dim, we'll often place a contact lens on the eye to act as a bandage. It's going to help you get through the first couple of days. After about three to four days, the discomfort goes away, and then we see a progressive stabilization of the cornea for over approximately a year. Our hope is that by doing collagen crosslinking and catching keratoconus early, we can keep our patients from ever needing that corneal transplant that 20% of them would eventually need. Now, a second indication for collagen crosslinking is post-refractive ectasia. This is a slightly different but similar condition where somebody may have had LASIK or PRK, which is laser refractive surgery, years ago, and now they're noticing a change in their vision. The process looks very similar to keratoconus, where for some reason the laser started to change the shape of the cornea, and now the cornea is progressively changing, causing worsening astigmatism. Additional laser treatments or enhancements would make this worse, and once again, we had no real options. Collagen crosslinking is also approved to stop progress of post-LASIK ectasia. Again, a very similar process, but seen sometimes in a slightly older patient population. In summary, we finally have a treatment that can treat keratoconus. It stops the progression, not a cure. So now instead of telling our patients, hey, there's nothing I can do, but we're going to follow this, and you might need surgery down the road, we can say, I can intervene in this process and keep your disease process from progressing and keep you in your glasses or contact lenses. I'm Brandon Ayers from the Cornea Service at Wills Eye Hospital. Thanks for watching from the Wills Eye Hospital Alumni Society Newsroom.